Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, permit me to make a very, very brief intervention on the proposed amendment to the legislation that is before the House, the Pension Act or the Pension Bill. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the proposed changes um, as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister earlier in the day. But I want to crave your indulgence and that of members, Mr. Speaker, to express condolences to my cousins who lost their mother um, last week in the persons of, well, I speak of Kathy, Larry, Joyce, Lynn, Yusela, Linda, Leonard, and Leroy. They lost their mom last week, Mr. Speaker, who happened to be my aunt. And so I want to profit the opportunity to express condolences to them. I also want to express condolences to Edwina Duma, better known as, as Gilded in Denny Rivier, who lost her daughter um, on the weekend. Marilyn was a very good friend of mine, and she was well known to most residents in Denny Rivier. Um, Mr. Speaker, and I must, of course, express condolences to Heidi Sukra, who lost her father in Grand Ravine um, a few days ago. Mr. Speaker, I want to commend, like the member for Viewfort North, the Honorable Minister for Youth Development and Sports for the manner in which she has presented St. Lucia to the world as one of the best hosts of cricket anywhere cricket is played in the world. And Mr. Speaker, I have a particular appreciation for what the Minister would have done, of course, getting the support and the resources from the Honorable Prime Minister. I remember after winning the elections in 2011, um, very late that year, we moved into 2012 almost immediately. And as the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, hosting the Australia versus West Indies Digital Home Series, mere days after assuming office, and on the eve of, of a game, Australia West Indies at the, the Bosage Cricket Grounds, as it was at the time, Lucilek moved in to cut the electricity, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> because the United Workers' Party had not honored their commitment to the utility companies, both Wasco and Lucilek. And so the, the timing was immaculate on the part of Lucilek to get some monies from the government, and so they interrupted the electricity, electricity supply. And I was a very nervous kitten as Minister for Youth Development and Sports, not knowing what needed to have been done at the time. And true to form, the, the parliamentary rep of Youth North, then Prime Minister, was able to assist. He fought south, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Maybe I am a couple of years into the future. Uh, Mr. Speaker was able to bail us out. And so, for somebody who has been watching the games, albeit on television, Mr. Speaker, I must tell you, I'm extremely pleased with what I see coming through the television screen. And of course, what is being said by some of the most renowned cricket pundits in the world. Last night, I listened to Matthew Hidden, the former Australian um, opening batsman, and Ricky Ponting and they were so full of admiration for St. Lucia, for the Darren Summit Cricket Ground, and for Ken Crafton and his team in particular, for what they presented to the world. And that, we, Mr. Speaker, we must not take that lightly, especially at a time when somebody who ought to do better was doing everything within his powers to try and derail the good name of St. Lucia to score very cheap political points. Mr. Speaker, I watched the member for View Forts, the, um, Mikud South, this morning as he presented. And Mr. Speaker, I, I, I did a bit of reflection, and it dawned on me that politics can be a very, very humbling endeavor, Mr. Speaker. Because a few years ago, I sat on the other side, and I watched the member right in this chair, Mr. Speaker. And he had teleprompters, and he was bigger than life, Mr. Speaker. He could have, he, he, he laughed at us, Mr. Speaker. He ridiculed us, Mr. Speaker. At every opportunity, we will belittle Mr. Speaker and disrespected. And today I watched him as he sat in the chair and attempting to make a, a presentation that was so incoherent and devoid of any kind of substance. And among the things he attempted to do, Mr. Speaker, was to try and give the impression that our government does not genuinely care about the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, the same man who denied six duly elected parliamentary representatives any resources to make interventions in their respective constituencies for one, two, three, four, five, and drag this into a six year. This is the man who talks about compassion today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, upon assuming office, under his leadership, the United Workers Party stopped the laptop program, and the list goes on and on and on. So, Mr. Speaker, when the member wants to talk about a government that is not compassionate and caring, 
Mr. Speaker, he must be looking at <coughs> the mirror because that is all he postured when he had an opportunity to make a very impactful um, or leave a very impactful impression on the lives of ordinary St. Lucians. And I've said in this chamber before that he does not like poor people. But what he attempts to do at every opportunity is to use the cameras to give the impression when he posts on social media that he's a champion of poor people or he has any kind of sympathy for poor people. But Mr. Speaker, he's a fake and people have seen him for what he is and this member shall never, ever regain um, I'm the position of Prime Minister in this country again. Mr. Speaker, I support the Prime Minister's proposal, Mr. Speaker, to increase the pension of poor people, or ordinary people, or retirees in our system. Mr. Speaker, $300. There are people in this system today who take home $300 a month, pensioners. What can you possibly do with $300? And it's against that backdrop and understanding the plight of ordinary people, understanding that people have to enjoy a particular standard of living in this country, that the Prime Minister in his wisdom saw the need to increase that amount, Mr. Speaker, to $725. The Prime Minister went further to state, Mr. Speaker, that even in the private sector or for agencies that are not in the remit of government, he will do whatever is possible to ensure that the minimum amount, minimum amount anybody takes home by way of a pension, Mr. Speaker, is $500. And Mr. Speaker, this aligns very nicely with the mantra that we've presented to St. Lucians in the last three years, putting people first. Putting people first. So when, Mr. Speaker, we say as a government that we understand the strain that parents have to deal with on the eve of the reopening of school, that we are going to pay facilities fees for them, Mr. Speaker. It is because we want to give them a better experience, to leave more monies in their pockets, so that you can have greater dollar circulation, Mr. Speaker, particularly in the rural parts of this country. And he won't understand that. But when he presided, during his reign as Prime Minister, in excess of $110 million was being spent in this country whilst children were going to school without devices. A hundred, more than $120 million being spent on horses, Mr. Speaker, when people could not get basic medication. And that is what he represents. But Mr. Speaker, I understand the desperation that characterizes the disposition of this particular member. Mr. Speaker, in three to four weeks time, we will be entering the fourth year. And as an opposition party, Mr. Speaker, if after two and three years you have nothing to hold on to, you will begin to punch in the dark to see what will land. And that is the desperation I talk about. So this week he's on the readiness of the stadium. Next week he's on CIP. The week after Mr. Speaker he's on bananas. He's all over the place. And I can now begin to understand why within his own organization people are asking for his removal as leader of the United Workers Party. And I, Mr. Speaker, I've been a student of the politics of this country for a long time. And I've observed how the parties operated. So that when the senior member comes here, from the member for Castries North, and he tells you that what you see on the other side, Sapa Flambeau, he knows precisely what he's talking about. I've heard the member for Castries East tell you how he had to fight the great Romanus Lansico. And it was always a contest of ideas, Mr. Speaker. But there was a respect that characterized the exchanges between the men. But what do you get on the other side? I, I challenge anybody to show me when last the United Workers Party came forward with an argument where they were genuinely challenging a policy position of the St. Lucia Labour Party. Instead, Mr. Speaker, it is attacks on the member for Castries East. It is attacks on the member for Castries South. It attacks on the member for Castries Central. I have gotten my fair share. The member for Viewfort North has not been spared. The member for Labry, Mr. Speaker, during the construction of St. Jude, during their reign or when we came in, certain allegations were made, lies were told about him. And the member for, for Mikunov, in very recent times, Mr. Speaker, he too has been under attack. So the strategy is clear. Let us go after their personalities. Let us try and denigrate their character. And if we do so, we, they believe it will resonate with the people. But I've said here before, and I'm going to say again, in 2024, the electorate is a lot more discerning than they would have been 
in the days when that kind of cheap politics would have resonated. Like Mr. Speaker, I'm going to say that I'm going to support the match government at point. The Premier Minister of Venezia has said that he doesn't think that this is a good thing for the people of the country. Comme les gens qui ont joué une pension qui a pris seulement 300 dollars, ou qui a joué seulement 300 dollars en bout de mois, puis ils ont payé la bille, payé le glou, acheté le et puis baillé la commission, et puis acheté le Et nous avons dit, M. Speaker, nous avons dit, 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 et qui s'en promet de faire des gens, les gens qui campagne, et qui ont venu en Parlement, qui ont été premier ministre, et qui a dit qu'il a reçu la rente, qu'au jour où ils ont joué 300 dollars par mois, ils ont joué 700 et puis 25 dollars pour pension. Mais ça, c'est seulement pour le gouvernement. Le premier ministre a aussi dit que pour ça, nous avons créé le private secteur, il a fait tout ce qui est nécessaire pour travailler avec ces gens-là, pour voir qui... Les gens qui ont joué une pension, qui ont allé à l'école, et puis à plus de 500 dollars pour la pension. Mais ce que je veux dire, c'est un gros démarche. Et pour les gens qui ont joué ici, qui ont joué, ils n'ont pas supporté, ils n'ont pas jamais tapé dans la situation, qui ont vécu et puis les gens pour qu'ils ne struggle pas. Mais peut-être qu'ils ont acheté un côté, qu'ils ont un site aisé pour gagner, qu'ils ont gagné l'élection, et qu'ils ont une opportunité pour venir et pour faire la différence dans la vie de la vie. Do tout work is I offer. Mr. Speaker, the list can go on and on in terms of all the acts of mismanagement and wastage that, that the United Workers Party um, was known for during the years 2016 to 2021. And so, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Denry North, I support the proposed amendment. And as I would have indicated before, this aligns with the mantra of putting people first. We are not about building, building mansions for people. But when we come and we refurbish a little plywood structure, Mr. Speaker, we know that we are engendering a sense of dignity and pride in people who otherwise would have been referred to as mendicants not too long ago. Mr. Speaker, I support the proposed amendment to the pension.